Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss the one of the most important topic that is open system interconnection model. So before going to the model, let's discuss the computer networking. So computer networking, as we know, that computer networking is a group of computers connected with each other for sharing resources. Resources can be like file or printer. For instance, this user wants to send some data to other users, then there's a connection between those users and they send the data to the next users. Now, these two computers can be just within a single room or those computers can be thousands of miles away from each other. And how this communication takes place and how, how they are going to interact with each other, we have a model for that to understand these all concepts. And that model is known as open system interconnection. So open system interconnection model is a conceptual model. And this is there just for understanding purpose that how the nodes communicate with each other. You cannot touch the OSI model because this is just a conceptual model. And to even better understand the OSI model, the OSI model itself is divided into seven layers. And these layers are shown here. And when, uh, when reading these layers, we start from the bottom, and, but when, when giving numbering to this, uh, these layers, we start from the bottom. So layers are numbered from bottom to top. From bottom, the first layer is known as physical layer. Second layer is data link layer. Third layer is network layer. Fourth is transport layer. Fifth is station. Sixth is presentation. And the seventh is application layer. And each of these seven layers performs their role so that nodes can communicate. So here, again, these seven layers are shown. But who actually gave us these seven layers? There is an international body that is called International Organization for Standardization, and which is an international standard setting body having a representative from various national standard organizations. So you see there are different persons from different uh, national organizations, and this ISO gave us OSI model in 1984. And in this OSI model, each layer defines some protocols, and those protocols are actually the rules and regulations. It means for each layer, there are some rules by which they have to perform some job to make the communication between two nodes possible. So sometimes this becomes challenging to remember all the names. And a solution for that is a sentence, a mnemonic sentence, that is, all people seem to need data processing. So you can see that the first letter of each word represents a name of some layers. For example, this is A. A is actually the application layer. So all people seem to need data processing. You can use this sentence to, to, to remember the names of all the layers. Now, the model, this model shows how the information flows from layer to layer, uh, starting from the application layer and ending at the physical layer at the transmitting end. See, the, this user uses the network, and this user generates some data. That data is, is, is handed over by the application to the application layer. Application layer hands over that data to the presentation. Presentation to the station, station to the transport, transport to the network, network to the data link, and data link to the physical layer. So this is how they hand over data from layer to layer. And now the same process happens. So this model also shows how the information, flow, information flows from layer to layer, from physical back to the application layer when at the receiving end. So what happens? At the receiving end, when the data arrives from this physical layer to this physical layer, which is actually the destination node, then this data is handed over to the data link layer, which hands over this data to, to the network layer and this transport layer, session, presentation, application, and finally this application layer actually presents whatever information has been sent by this, this application layer presents that data or, or makes it possible to visualize that information by this user. 
now for example the same process of layer to layer flow occurs if the data has to be sent back to the sender so what happens if this this node also has to send data back to this node has to send the data back to this sender then again the same process has to occur that this layer has to hand over some data to this 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 and then data has to travel from this point to back to by following this layered approach back to this node so each layer on sender machine logically communicate its, its uh, with its pair layer so each layer of okay, this is the application layer and this is also application layer so these layers logically communicate with their pair layers so this means whatever app operation sender performs on the data the receiver does the reverse of it of it so whatever operation for example this application layer on the sender node does the send uh, the receiver node at the application node performs the reverse of it for example if if the user if the user, if this user applies some compression then on the receiving node this node has to uh, apply the decompression to to that so in this way all the layers uh, uh, have a logical uh, connection in between them application layer presentation session transport network data and physical the purpose of this this is that whatever operation is performed by this these layers the reverse of that has to be performed by these layers at the at the receiving end and now let's move to the application layer specific so the application layer actually is the layer is the layer it which allows user to use application like google chrome for example if this user wants to use the in uh, wants to see some web pages it's using some sort of, uh, Google Chrome and this user may also use WhatsApp Messenger. So, so this application layer allows the user to use the network resources with the help of these application programs. And so, this application layer actually acts as an interface between user applications and the network resources. So, these are the user applications, and we have the network resources. These all are the network resources. Application layer provides an interface between between the application used by the by the user and the network resources. And these applications can be, for example, we have different applications like we have HTTP by which we use we we can visit some websites. We also have the DNS application that is domain name system to translate IP address or names to IP address. If you want to send some email address, then we use this SMTP. This is also an application layer protocol. So these are the protocols which help user to 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 use the network resources now let's move to second the presentation layer the job of the presentation layer uh, is to encode the data so that the destination can interpret it so what happens the job of this presentation layer is to encode the data for example this users by using some keyboard type any letter then this letter has to be translated are converted into some binary form so let's this is the binary number and we have different formats to convert those letter into into some binary form so for example we have ascii codes which are there which are going to convert our letters for example a has some binary representation this is the representation for a and for b we also have these all representations so i mean to say this presentation there actually does the translation and the second job is that the presentation layer is also there to compress the data to so with compression actually we encode the user data so that we can utilize fewer bits less number of bits to transmit or to, to, to save the data or to transmit the data and the third operation the third job of the presentation layer is data encryption data encryption means we convert the data into some specified specified format and this also includes formats like jpg so these are really important we are using so these are different formats and to convert our data into these formats is the job of presentation layer next is the session layer so the session layer is 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 actually there 
and this is the responsibility for establishing and maintaining and finally terminating a session between user processes and actually what are sessions for example when you want to log in in your bank account so when when you want to log in into your bank account then the they the, the the they ask you for the username and password so the username and password means they are asking you for some uh, uh, authorization so this session layer provides security and authentication and sometimes you see sometimes if you are not using your web page or bank account for a while then it's automatically locked off it means now the session is going to be locked off because of this inactivity so who's going to do this the session there is going to perform the job of this thing. So this is username and password, and like this it works. And next, another job of session layer is there. For example, in, during web conferencing, the session uh, involves voice as well as video. And session layer is there to synchronize them so that they both uh, occur at the same time. If there will be any mismatch, then we will not be enjoying uh, this video conferencing. So session layer is going to provide the synchronization between voice and video. So for example, this is this is this is the Zoom, which is which is a video conferencing application. And with Zoom, we, you can have video video link in between them. So it, it session layer actually synchronize the voice and video. Then we have the transport layer. Now the job of transport layer is important in the case that on one machine, on one computer, this user may be using different applications like uh, like maybe instant instant messaging, WhatsApp, some web pages, of, uh, some real-time videos. Now it means on the same machine we are using different applications. And now application, this transport layer is there to differentiate between these different application programs. And the transport layer uses an addressing that is called port addressing to identify application programs. And by using port addressing, multiple application use uh, application programs can use the network resources and this is also known as session multiplexing it means the transport layer provides the mul multiple sessions to use simultaneously the network resources and the port numbers are there to identify different applications for example for http when we want to visit some web page the port number for that is 80 and if I want to use the DNS domain name system then the port number is 53 so these are the port numbers uh, used at the transport layer to differentiate among different application programs and the second job of the uh, the transport layer is to divide the data into parts so what ha what happens the session layer gives handovers the data and towards the data to the transport layer and the transport layer receives the data and adds so the transport layer got data and the transport layer adds header on top of it and after adding header on the data they call this a segment so we call that part of the data plus header a segment and this process and this process is actually known as encapsulation And the transport layer also ensures message delivery in sequence number. So what happens when the transport layer makes these segments and adds the header into it, the header has the sequence number. So now during transmission, if this, if for example these are three segments, if they arrive at the destination in, in, in different sequence, then this is the job of the transport layer to arrange those all segments into, into the sequence in which they were sent. And finally, this, is, this also provides reliability by acknowledgement. It means at the receiving end, this header also has sequence number and receiving end also acknowledges that I have received these many segments. In this way, this provides an acknowledgement. And this also controls the flow that how much data should I send, how much data a transmitting nail should send to the, to the receiving end. So this is also providing the flow control by looking at the memory or the, or the capacity of the medium. Network layer, important layer, interesting layer. 
So network layer actually carries data from one network to another. So for example, these two users are maybe thousands of miles away from each other and they are maybe in this user is in network A and this user maybe is this is in A and this is in B. They are in different networks. The job of the network layer is to carry data from one network to another. And what happens in network layer? In the network layer, the transport layer hands over data to the network layer. Network layer takes the data and adds header on top of that and we call that a packet. So the data uh, which also include the header by the TCP layer, uh, the transport, sorry, the transport layer. So the network layer is going to add header on top of that and we call this as a packet. And by using header, the network layer uses logical addressing. For example, we use IP addressing. IP address is there to identify the network because network uh, carries data from one network to another. It means we should have some network identification and that is called logical addressing or the network address and we use IP addresses there. And, and this network layer also performs routing. Routing means they select the best path from, for a packet to be transmitted from one point to another. So in this case, for example, this, this, if the packet arrives here, there, there are multiple ways to go at the destination. So this router, the layer three job is, the, is to find out the best path among these available paths. So this is called routing and this is the job of the network layer. And router does this job or performs this operation by using some parameters like it will check the bandwidth it will also check the congestion, if there is a congestion on any of the path, and it also checks for the priority. By using these are different parameters, the network layer actually makes a routing decision. So you see here where the data goes from source to destination, from one network to another network. Then a data link layer. Data link layer is actually responsible for hop to hop delivery using physical addressing. Uh, that addressing is also known as MAC addressing or sometimes NIC and network interface card addressing. So from hop to hop means from, from this point to this point, or from this point to this point. So from this hop to this hop, this intermediate uh, delivery is the job of the data link layer. And data link layer also adds header and trailer to the path. Sorry, header is added by the transport layer and the network layer, but data link layer in addition to header also adds trailer to the, to the packet. So this is the data from the network layer and the data link layer is going to add header and trailer on top of that. You can see here, this one, data and header and trailer. And at the data link layer, we call that a frame. And this is also encapsulation. So whatever has been received in the form of packet by the network layer, data link layer is going to add header and trailer on top of that and we call it a frame. And this data link layer is also responsible for media access control. It means whatever made media is there, whatever media to transmit the data, so it is going to control the access to the to the median. If there are multiple users, then who is allowed to use the median at, at some specific time? This is the job of the data link layer to decide about that. And the data link layer is also responsible for frame delimiting. Frame delimiting is required because the data is continuously generated by the upper layer. Now, at the destination, we should know that for a specific frame, where is the start of the frame and where is the end of the frame. So that information is also provided by the data link layer. Uh, and that's called frame delimiting. And data link layer also provides for error-free transmission between the nodes. So what happens in this, in the during encapsulation process, in this trailer part of the frame, we add some CRC are cyclic redundancy check, which is there to help 
resolve the error issue. This is the final layer, that is the physical layer, and the physical layer uh, is, is there to actually carry the data. So the binary data is encoded and transmitted as per the media requirement. The data link layer is there. This hands over the data to the physical layer, like this, and the physical layer converts the data into a binary form, like zeros and ones, and then zeros and ones are transmitted from this node to the receiving node, on the destination node. And this data can be in digital format. So these are digital signals, and this data we just traveled can also be in the form of uh, sine waves or the carrier waves. Are. So these are, these are different formats by which the data travels from one point to another. And this physical layer also defines media type, that what kind of media is being used between the end nodes. And this also defines the connection types. For example, this is a UTP cable. So this UTP cable, uh, all, all the specifications are, are to be dealt by the physical layer. And this also defines the connections of some connectors. For example, we have this RJ45. So what should be the shape, what should be the size of this connector, this all has to be defined by the physical layer. So thank you, thank you very much. This was the last